This is 4793, and we're going to tell you about tennis balls. So, tennis was started way back in the 15th century, and the balls that they were using were leather with uh, rag or horsehair filling. Um, since then, tennis has really evolved and changed into something more close to something called lawn tennis. Um, and the standards are set by ITF, the International Tennis Federation, which have um, really standardized and changed the balls to what we know today. Okay, uh, tennis balls undergo many forces during the span of a tennis match. First of all, a racket imparts impulsive high magnitude normal forces on the ball. And then the ball will hit the tennis court and then it experiences another smaller normal force, but then as well a high shear force. And that's a result of friction between the tennis ball surface and the court surface. <clears throat> figures three and figures four show that the tennis balls undergo significant forces during the span of the tennis match. The expected lifetime of tennis balls vary with use. Um, for recreational use, they can last approximately 7 to 12 hours of gameplay, but for competitive use, they last for about 3 to 4 hours of competitive ga gameplay because the properties of the ball decrease as, as it is used. Um, the price for the tennis balls also vary with <clears throat> quantity of purchase and location of purchase, and they can range anywhere from 75 cents to $1.33. So for the standard design of a tennis ball, we have that inside rubber core, which is actually hollowed, um, and there's pressurized air within that core. Um, that rubber core has an adhesive that binds the felt cover um, to the top of that. Um, there are many types of tennis balls. Those are all standardized by, again, the ITF. Uh, within the tennis materials used with all those um, parts that I just described, the rubber core is mostly made out of natural rubber, but it is a blend of natural and synthetic. Um, and that uh, blend also includes a couple fillers um, and curing agents to aid in the manufacturing process, speed things up, um, and also give it a little bit more mechanical stability. Um, then the binding agent that is used to uh, bind the core to the felt on the outside is a vulcanized rubber um, solution, and that vulcanized solution uh, cures with heat. The felt that is used as the cover, um, the felt is mostly more commonly the melton type felt. Melton is mostly wool um, blended with a bit of synthetic fibers. Um, there is a slightly cheaper option called needle. It is far less common. It is completely, well, mostly synthetic fibers. So moving on to the manufacturing process, we start off with the free process where you choose the raw materials between the synthetic rubber and natural rubber. So um, in tennis, we'll choose natural rubber because of its better mechanical properties. So now in a factory, the first step that the rubber raw material goes through is the crushing and mixing in an open mill for up to 5 minutes. Then moving on, there is the extrusion to form pellets where this um, rubber compound in the first step is pushed through under pressure through an orifice to form rock and then cut into pellet. So and then in the third step, there's compression molding for the pellet to, cause the half, to form the half sphere. This half sphere is put under a hydraulic press for up to two and a half minutes to get the half sphere that we see. All right, moving on to the fourth step involves the inflating of hollow sphere, where the half sphere comes together and the factory has to inflate pressure into the, into the hollow sphere. This uh, process gives the ball more bounce, more spin and more speed when played on court. And in step five involves the shell coating. It's an operation called barreling, where the rubber ball is coated with a layer of rubber, which, um, yeah, and then moving on to the last step is the finishing where two dumbbell felt are placed adjacent to each other 90 degrees so that to form this yellow ball that we see today and moving on to the post processors which is the brand name printing and quality check which i'll pass on to jay so in terms of quality check um, basically all companies adhere to the ift standards so that their tennis balls can be used in competition so there's very little variation between tennis balls um, first, we're concerned with the mass, the size, and the color. Here you see the testing for the size, where the ball must pass through the first ring, but cannot pass through the second. Um, and then, more importantly, we have our performance characteristics, where we're concerned with deformation, rebound, and durability. For deformation, we have the, uh, the test right here, where we see you apply load to 80 newtons and record the forward deformation. You continue applying the load, and then you come back, and you record that return deformation. If we continue on, um, we see here the four different types of tennis balls. 
These are all used in different situations depending on the court type, whether it's acrylic or whether it's clay, grass, um, and then also the altitude. And then below here, we see the information for durability requirements. Um, the tennis ball will go through wear that simulates nine games of play, um, and then you make sure that they fall within these bounds in order for it to be approved for competition play. In terms of cost analysis, um, since there's very little standard, or since there's so much standardization, there's very little differences in quality um, between different tennis balls from different companies. So as a result, the prices are very low, they're very inexpensive, and customers buy them when they're on sale. So um, it's a very price sensitive market, and uh, we use a loss leader strategy commonly with retail stores when we're pricing tennis balls, um, such that uh, Basically, you sell the product at a loss and then you hope that the consumers will buy more products to actually drive a profit. So overall, we don't recommend that a company enters into the market because um, you're not going to be able to generate the profit that will overcome the capital investment from the initial high tooling costs. So overall, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email us. Uh, these are our references and this is Tennis Balls.